In 2024, a lot has changed in the Home Assistant Automation UI, which means it's time for an updated video. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Automation Editor. We will go over what it all means, and I'm going to walk you through building a real automation that will notify me if my basement floods. Again. Because this sucked. So hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to start automating the boring stuff in 2024. Automations are part and parcel of building a smart home. Actually, I consider them the smarts in a smart home because without automations, you get nothing, you lose. <laughs> but if you're new to Home Assistant, or even if you've been doing this as long as I have, the automation UI here at the start of 2024 can be a bit intimidating. The goal of this video is to get you comfortable using the UI editor. But first, let's talk about what you need to follow along with this video. To follow along with this video, you'll need to have some devices or entities you want to automate. And you'll want a situation that you want to automate. I'm going to be building an automation to send a notification if my basement floods. For devices, I'm using these third reality water leak sensors and these Acara flood sensors. Neither third reality or Acara are sponsoring this video. I bought these with my own money. And so far, I prefer the third reality sensors because it has an audible alarm. Anyway. I'll be using the HA Companion app for the notifications to start with, and just to keep things simple. Of course, you don't really need any of that just to watch, so don't take off just yet. I just won't be walking through how to add devices to Home Assistant in this video. You really just need to be familiar with or have a desire to learn Home Assistant. Oh, and a bit of a warning, this may get a bit long because I'm going to get into some details. If you haven't already found it, you can get to the Automation Editor by clicking Settings over in the left menu, then choosing Automations and Scenes. By default, you'll find yourself looking at a list of all your automations. If this is blank, don't worry. You can add an automation by clicking Create Automation, which is down in the lower right. This will give you a box with your first choice in this journey. Here you can pick Create a New Automation which will give you a blank canvas to start with. Or you could choose one of the blueprints listed under that. As of this video, I have two blueprints to choose from, motion activated light or zone notification. Neither of these fit my purpose because blueprints are pre-built automation designed to automate a specific situation. When using a blueprint, all you need to do is choose the devices you want to use. Somebody else has already written the automation for you. For example, in motion activated light, you would just have to pick a motion sensor, a light you want to automate, and a wait time you want to leave the light on after that last motion was detected. And that's it. Pretty simple. You can find other blueprints on the Home Assistant forum. I'll leave a link to those blueprints in the description of this video. If you're new to Home Assistant though, I would advise to stay away from the other threads in the forum. In my experience, most of the forum isn't welcoming to those starting out with Home Assistant. But that's a rant for another day. In this video, I'm going to create an automation from scratch, which is typically what I always choose. In this option, we're presented with three areas. When, and if, then do. If you're used to the old automation layout or the automation YAML, when is the same as triggers, and if is the same as conditions, then do is the same as actions. Think of this as a framework to build your automation. For example, when X happens, and if Y is true, then do Z. When building an automation, the and if section isn't required. Okay, if that all seems a bit much, don't worry. It'll hopefully make a little more sense with a real world example. For this, I'm going to build an automation to notify me when water is detected in my basement. So let's start with the when, or triggers, for this situation. When you click Add Trigger, we'll get some choices. Device, which is perfect if you have a specific device you want to trigger this automation. This one will also give you some states and a dropdown to choose from, which may make that easier. The downsides to using this option is you can only pick one device. So if you have multiple devices that are the same with different names, you would need to add multiple trigger options. Next, we have Entity. This is a good choice if you have multiple devices that all have similar states. 
and you want to trigger the automation regardless of which device changes state. The downside to this one is you have to define the stage you want to trigger on. Another option is time and location. This one is perfect if you want to set up an automation to trigger at a specific time, or on an interval, or when someone enters or leaves a zone, and other triggers, which I would consider to be more advanced. The use cases for these choices are things like geolocation triggers and when Home Assistant starts up or shuts down, template-based triggers, and things like that. And don't worry, if you pick the wrong trigger, you can always come back to the three dots and pick delete. For this automation, I'm going to use Entity. I have three flood sensors, and I want to trigger this automation when any of them detect water. I will add my flood sensors. If you have an attribute of your entity that you want to trigger on, you can choose it under attribute. This might include things like temperature of the device or something like that. For this though, I'm just going to use the main state. I will set the to state to wet. The to state is the state I want to watch for. For automations, you don't have to include a from state, but I would recommend including it unless there's a specific use case you're trying to automate. If you don't set a from state, then anytime the state of your device changes to that defined to state, this automation will fire. And that includes when it changes from unavailable to your to state, which could happen, and depending on what you're trying to automate, might cause a false positive. And you have the ability to set a for time, which allows you to set a time around your to state. So if you need this device to be in that to state for five minutes before it triggers this automation, you would add five minutes here under four. In this use case, I want to trigger as soon as water is detected, so I will leave that out. Now that we've defined all of that, we can hit this little caret symbol and minimize this section. This description here isn't very intuitive though, so we can hit the three dots and choose rename, and give it a name that is more descriptive, like basement gets wet. I also like to click on these three dots and add a trigger ID, which we do by clicking edit ID. Here we can give it a name that we can use to refer to this trigger later. This is helpful when you have multiple triggers and you need to have a different action based on what trigger kicked off this automation. After that, we can set our and if criteria. These are conditions we want to be true in order for this automation to fire. Think of them as limiters or guardrails. And you do want them to be true like only fire this automation when Jeffrey is home. If you need a negative option to be true, you may need to create a template that evaluates as true. So just keep that in mind. The important thing is everything in this and if section needs to evaluate true or the automation isn't going to fire. For example, we'll add a check to make sure that the group.family is home. When we pick add condition, we get all of the same options as we did with trigger plus a building blocks option. But for these, instead of looking for a change in state, we're looking for a specific state to be in place. Other conditions here include and, or, and not. Not is helpful if you need that negative condition to be true. Here I'm going to add my first condition as an entity and pick group.family, and for the state I need it to be in as home. So now, when this automation triggers, it will make sure that the state group.family is home, and if it isn't, the automation will stop. But I also want to include when guest mode is on. So I'll add another entity, choose my guest mode switch, and set the state as on. So now, this automation will run when triggered if the group.family is home and guest mode is on. Because again, everything in this and if section has to evaluate as true. But there is a use case where all of the members of the group.family are not home, but guest mode is on because there are guests at my house. And in this example, I want this automation to fire if the family is home or guest mode is on. So let's add one of these building blocks and choose or, which gives us this section where if anything in this box is true, the automation will fire, even if the other options in this box are false. And we can grab this little dot map thing and drag our guest mode condition into this new section using the fancy new drag and drop 
capability. So now it looks like our conditions read and if group.family is home or guest mode is on. But that is not actually what this means because each condition in this and if section is joined with and. So despite moving the guest mode check into this or section, the automation will still read this as and if the family is home and guest mode is on. Since we want either of these to be true, we need to drag the group.family condition into this or section as well. And now we have it set right. This automation will fire if any condition in this section is true, which would read as and if family is home or guest mode is on. This is no doubt confusing, and I've seen it catch a few people on Reddit. So remember, this or only applies to items listed under it. Any condition added in addition to this or section would be joined with an and. Okay, now we can head to the do section. Here, we have a lot of choices under the add action. And depending on how you build your automations, this may be all you need. But when I build automations, I try to make them as smart as possible. And I try to build them not based on a single event, but a group of events. So in this automation, I'm planning on eventually adding triggers for any water leak sensor so that anything related to automating around water leak events will be contained in a single automation. I do this because it reduces my automations and makes them easy to organize so I can find what I need faster. And while I don't have that in here yet, I'm going to build for that future, which means I'm gonna back out of this and choose add building blocks. Here, I'm going to pick the choose action. This action allows us to add decision logic to our automation based on context we have in this automation, like what triggered it, or context elsewhere in our smart home. Like you could have a different action based on what water leak sensor triggered this automation. To use this, we need to define our conditions for the first option in this action. And here, I'm going to pick other conditions and choose trigger by. This will give me a list of all the trigger IDs I have set in this automation. Right now, I just have one, basement underscore floods. So I'll choose it. If you have other conditions, you could add them in the same way we added the above conditions in the and if section. Just remember, the and if section above are global limits for this automation. Your automation won't make it this far if the and if section above is false which may mean you need to move those down here to the choose action. But for now, I'm gonna leave them up there as global limits and leave this as trigger ID only. Then in actions, I wanna send a notification, so I will choose add action. Then I will pick my text notify script. This script allows me to send a notification and uses fields. Here, I'll set the who to parents which tells the script to send this notification to all the devices linked to me and my wife. And for message, I'll put water in the dungeon, thought you ought to know. And then I will rename this action to send text notification since script on isn't all that descriptive. And after that, we now have our automation built. When water is detected in the basement and if family is home or guest mode is on, then do a notification to our phones. I'll eventually add Jarvis in this as well so he can give us some snarky response. But for now, I'll hit save and we'll be prompted to name our automation. And here, I'll just put water leaks. Before we wrap this up, I wanna point out a couple of more UI options that might be helpful. First, if you're interested in seeing what the YAML version of this automation looks like, head to the three dots in the upper right and choose edit in YAML. You'll get the YAML version. Dear God, it's beautiful. Click edit in visual editor and it will bring you back to the visual option. In that menu, you also have the option to change the mode. For this automation, single will be fine. Single means the automation can only have one instance running at a time. So if it triggers again while this automation is running, the new automation will just stop. Restart will mean that if the automation is running and it gets triggered again, the automation that's running will just simply stop where it's at and restart. This mode is perfect for automations that have a cooldown like a for condition in a trigger. For example, as soon as motion is no longer detected for five minutes, turn off the light. 
Restart mode would cause the automation to refire if motion is detected during that cooldown event as long as that motion is one of your triggers, and essentially reset the timer. Queued mode means that if an automation is running and is triggered again, another instance will queue up and run as soon as the first instance completes. This would be perfect for an automation that needs to execute a specific task each time it's triggered. And lastly, parallel, which means another instance of this automation will start and run at the same time if it's already running when it's triggered again. I'm really not sure what a good use case for this one is, but the option is there if you have one. And lastly, traces, which will allow you to debug your automations. For the current one, there are no traces since it was never triggered. But if we look at one that has, you'll see a log of its last run. Here we can see the last run, and in fact, you can see the previous runs using this drop down at the top. But for this run, we have all the triggers illustrated as circle asterisk at the top. The one highlighted with color is the one that triggered the automation last. Next, we have the icon for the choose action, since this automation, like so many of mine, uses the choose action. And it apparently didn't meet any of the options I set, which are these circled squares. Under each of those are the actions in each choose option. The highlighted line on the far right is the default option, which is the one that got picked. If you click on each of these, you'll see what the state or the current value was when it tested this condition. And it will tell you if it didn't run this option. This is a really helpful feature and available for all automations, regardless of whether they live in the automation.yaml file or not. Just be aware that any automation not in that automation.yaml file is read-only in the UI editor. You can click Migrate if you want to edit it here, which will migrate it to that automation.yaml file from wherever it is. But you can also just leave it where it is. If you want to know more about that text notify script or how to set up fields in your script, check out this recent video where I cover all of that. And keep automating the boring stuff. Mm -hmm.